Philippe, je t'invite à présenter Hamid. Philippe, I would like to invite you to introduce Hamid. Uh, Philippe, uh, on ne t'entend pas. Uh, Peut-être ton micro est fermé. Is it better like this? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. sorry about that. Uh, um, so thank you, Annette, and thank you, Amid, for uh, uh, accepting to give this talk. Um, uh, Amid is well known uh, here uh, in, in Canada and in Quebec, especially. Uh, he did uh, his uh, bachelor's degree at Sharif University of Technology in Iran, but afterwards he went on to do his master's and PhD at McGill University at the Center for Intelligent Machines, <clears throat> where many of the people uh, attending today, uh, some of the people at least attending today have studied or are also faculty there still. Um, so uh, currently he's doing a sabbatical at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, uh, but he's a professor at Kian Tutsi University of Technology, and he is the director and I believe founder of the ARAS Lab, the Advanced uh, Robotics and Automated Systems Laboratory. And um, his research interests are quite diversified. He has a, a, a large and diversified research team and he's publishing in control and in robotic systems and in the mechanics also of robotic systems so uh, uh, with that uh, Hamid can you uh, present your talk on parallel and cable robots sure uh, hi everybody it's a really pleasure having all of you uh, in this talk uh, I uh, would rather give a seminar in person, but uh, during uh, through the, the COVID uh, these days, it is uh, quite hard to, to gather so many people around. So uh, I will uh, present uh, some of our uh, research on parallel and cable robotic. Uh, and uh, I have uh, contained two parts, uh, the theoretical and technological advancement. Before starting, uh, I would like to thank all the organizers and uh, uh, also, Philip and Clemo for inviting me, and uh, other people from SIM uh, who are uh, joining us, and also other students and uh, faculty members that are present in the seminar. Um, what uh, I will present uh, is basically uh, in, into uh, six parts, uh, into two main uh, sections. I give a very brief introduction about uh, pattern and cable robotics. <clears throat> since many people are familiar with that. Uh, then I will go through uh, some of our products uh, in parallel and also in cable robotics, uh, both in terms of the robots and also the components for sensing or actuation and uh, different uh, projects that we have accomplished there. And then uh, I will go through the, the last part of my seminar, which is more theoretical and uh, recent advancement that uh, has been uh, done in our uh, group on dynamical analysis and also on uh, a new line of research on data-driven control of uh, robot parallel. Uh, just to introduce you, ARAS is the acronym of Advanced Robotic and Automation System. <clears throat> Uh, it's founded in 1997 uh, by me and two of my colleagues, uh, now over 25 years. Uh, we uh, promote uh, uh, contribution and advancement academic education and research in the field of robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, in ARAS, we have uh, five main groups. Uh, the uh, research group, the main research groups are divided into autonomous robotics, parallel and cable robotic, dynamical system and control, surgical robotic, and mixed reality and surgery. And what I will uh, present today is mostly uh, come from the parallel and cable robotic research group, uh, which uh, aims to develop a new robotic assisted or new robotic based technology for a variety of industrial and artistic applications. <clears throat> 
just uh, to start with uh, the products, I just show uh, two of our uh, previous uh, uh, products on parallel uh, mechanism. That this one is quite familiar for everyone, a Delta robot which is a pick and place uh, the robot and uh, the optimization of uh, design and also the path planning for uh, the movement to have the, uh, the fastest movement uh, available is uh, done uh, previously in our lab. And as you see, uh, the robots usually, we, we develop uh, also the robots uh, by the student as you see here. The second robot, which is more uh, advanced, oh, is uh, on uh, surgical robotics. Uh, this is a robot is also it's a single uh, loop parallel manipulator, which is a spherical uh, manipulator used uh, for vitro-retinal eye surgery uh, uh, application. Uh, we have a surgical robotic group, and this is uh, one of the products that has been proposed a few years ago. And uh, later on, we have uh, much more development on surgical robotics, <clears throat> which cannot be, of course, uh, explained in this seminar. Uh, in terms of uh, RS cable robots, we have uh, many number of robots, which uh, a few of them uh, I would like to introduce here. The first one is uh, Nasir which goes back to 10 years ago, we started with a constraint uh, robot, uh, fully constraint robot, a planner robot for development of different uh, robust and adaptive control methods. Uh, but uh, uh, one version of the more interesting robot, which I would like to introduce here is a painter robot, a camera remote one and two robots, which are uh, used for uh, artistic applications. I will uh, introduce a bit uh, further. And also, we have a, a fully uh, a large scale, fully uh, suspended cable robot, we call it as CAM, which is uh, used for uh, different uh, video capturing application. <clears throat> if I go uh, further, the, with starting with Nasir, as you see here, we have a, a planner robot with four cables. Uh, it is over constrained. It has a large controller space, and uh, uh, the controller workspace space consists of the moving platform, uh, which can exert uh, different wrenches to the moving uh, platform as uh, the, the robotic and panel community. Now, we did a lot of uh, research on this uh, robot and uh, on the uh, work through the feasible wrench spaces and also on the controllable mode spaces. Uh, different uh, algorithm on the control, uh, especially robust control for the system has been uh, developed and further implemented on the robot. After that uh, version, we uh, come up with a, a simple idea of uh, very nice and deployable cable robotic, which can be used as you see, uh, to draw uh, artistic uh, paintings, uh, call it uh, black and uh, white painting like that. And uh, it is uh, uh, very, very uh, 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 basically uh, simple, but very interesting in terms of the application and the, in terms of the audience, general audience that can be used. This robot uh, is also planner. It is using only two uh, cables. And uh, the robot uh, draws portrait and calligraphy with uh, different Persian font. And, uh, especially when you saw it is painting, uh, it is uh, very interesting. Of course, uh, this uh, we call it Camel Moon. Camel Moon is a, a Persian uh, painter, a famous painter, Camel Moon robot, which uh, is uh, somehow a painter robot, as you see in here. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, started with this and then uh, integrated different uh, uh, camel uh, versions of Camel Moon, as you see. Uh, this is Camel Robot 2. Uh, the previous robot uh, was very good in terms of uh, 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 deployment and fast deployment and uh, workout, but quite slow in uh, painting. It takes about 10 minutes to uh, draw paint, uh, uh, as, as you see in the previous uh, slide. Uh, we generated a new design uh, perspective or optimization uh, here. Uh, the second uh, version has been used uh, uh, and is shown here. 
uh, basically we would uh, parallelogram lengths as you see here. Uh, instead of using one cable, we use uh, uh, double cables uh, in a different structure and also use the uh, three uh, AC motors here uh, to have some sort of redundancy or uh, over constraint or what you can see here. Uh, this is also quite novel and attractive. It can have much higher acceleration speed and uh, could be using for large world spaces you know, and uh, challenging. Uh, of course, uh, it has uh, very challenges in terms of optimization design and also in terms of the control. Uh, I guess uh, we can see some, some of the basic idea here. As you see here, we use uh, uh, a special character of a uh, you know, parallelogram uh, system, but using three motors, we have three cables connected here uh, in a special form and uh, special uh, kinematic analysis, Jacobian and uh, also dynamic analysis uh, done here. This work also uh, is uh, uh, in a collaboration with Navar and with Philip. And uh, we developed that, implemented it. And you can see this is a real uh, time uh, movie, as you see. It is quite fast and uh, quite accurate in terms of uh, uh, having uh, painting on larger areas. <clears throat> uh, the, the last but not the least is the uh, large scale cable uh, driven robots. Uh, as you see, the usual cases, we call it a, uh, a, a spider cam which is the well-known example of this robot, which is using for filming and recreational and sport application. Uh, this uh, robot is also uh, suspended. It has four, uh, uh, actually, uh, actuators, four sensors, and, uh, uh, but the end detector is fully suspended and it can be uh, using uh, for the filming application. <coughs> As you see in here, uh, just give a bit of uh, overview of the system and the component that has been developed. All the components have been developed by in our lab. Uh, we have a number of uh, power units, uh, which uh, all the actuation part and force sensing comes in here. Uh, we have an end detector, a smart end detector that can be used for filming, of course, here we are using for research. Uh, yeah, we are putting some camera base here for uh, SLAM application for uh, VO and other uh, visualization application as uh, I discussed uh, further. We have an IR tracker, uh, usually for controlling a, a robot, a cable robot in task space, we need uh, to have a measurement of the end detector. And uh, since it is uh, quite uh, intensive and quite expensive here, we have developed a special IR tracker, which is very, very uh, promising. I will explain a bit uh, about it. And of course, the control unit, the central back acquisition, everything, all the uh, wiring, cam bus, the protocols are, uh, has been developed in the lab uh, by our students. Here you can see the uh, very uh, short uh, schematic or the picture of the tower unit. We have four of these. Uh, we have a, a motor uh, that can be uh, put it here, and then uh, we have a box unit, we have a force sensor, and also a pulley that uh, provides us the an anchor point here. And this could be quite much, much work and be used for different uh, other towers as well. Uh, the end effector we use uh, is different. We use a smart end effector. We put a number of sensors on the end effector uh, in terms of uh, further research on uh, finding the position of uh, the end effector in uh, real time and component using it for the control. As you see in here, uh, this end effector is equipped with uh, monocular and also a stereo camera. It is also equipped with some uh, uh, INU based units on it uh, to have uh, also further measurement uh, of positioning. And also, uh, we have uh, can. Uh, have the force sensors and the encoder data, everything. And with this smart uh, end effector, we have developed the first uh, data set on cable robotics motion uh, uh, extraction that can be used for visual odometry, other type of uh, uh, smart way to find the uh, localization and, uh, um, uh, and also the navigation of the system. 
Uh, this uh, is the portable IR tracker. This is another project which uh, has been developed so many uh, versions of it. We started with two cameras, like a stereo camera, but then we extended it to more than two cameras. Uh, and uh, this is uh, basically a compact, very accurately measured the end detector. Uh, I'll show you the accuracy in the next slide. Uh, we can have a portable infrared tracker system powered by two high quality machine vision sensors and a zinc FPGA that can be quite uh, uh, online and uh, very uh, uh, usable in terms of uh, with the main processor that it can be used for the control. Very soon, with everything going on, um, we need. The, the main uh, the measurement done by system uh, are used as the ground truth for the calibration for the uh, some sort of robot. This can be put uh, on the system. We have another version of it that can be uh, used uh, as a camera on the manipulator that on the end of it that then can be used here. You can see here the uh, extension of this uh, referencing based system with six cameras. You can see two cameras are, are being put on the ceiling. Uh, we have basically uh, on the wall and uh, four cameras on the wall with uh, seven and a half meter and two meter height, and then two uh, cameras on the uh, ceiling, and then uh, perform the a very uh, very nice uh, graph based optimization to find a very accurate positioning of the system. We can have a, a single or multiple IR. Uh, pointers on the end detector, and these uh, cameras will detect and uh, the formulate the system to that. You can see that the measurement that we have done uh, for uh, more than uh, 38 points in the workspace uh, on the on the floor, which is about two meter uh, height uh, difference from the cameras, and as you see, the statistical error comes to less than one millimeter. Uh, accuracy we can uh, approach that. This is quite promising for uh, not only this application, for many other applications that, uh, that can be used in here. So uh, by uh, coming this, uh, uh, ending this part of uh, process, a number of development uh, has been shown. Basically, we in Aras uh, are some developers. Uh, when we finish something, uh, we start a new development. <laughs> And that's uh, the, the way it goes uh, for our, uh, the, the past 25 years for us. Uh, I would like to emphasize some uh, theoretical aspect of uh, cable robotics uh, and parallel robotics here, since we have uh, a number of uh, experts here who can, uh, can give us some uh, very valuable uh, feedback on the dynamic and control of the, this system. Uh, in terms of dynamics, we have uh, done a lot of uh, research uh, on dynamic. Or one of our research work are, uh, be, uh, the, you know, are based on virtual uh, work approach. The virtual work approach uh, uh, is uh, a method that uh, is uh, computationally not that in, uh, in intensive. And as I show here, uh, by using some uh, general idea, it can uh, have very, very uh, promising uh, developed model by this method. Uh, but uh, why uh, a dynamic model is needed? This is the first uh, item that I would like to uh, emphasize. When you are developing a robot, you need a dynamic model for different reasons. The first uh, approach is the mechanical design. Uh, you want to find the sensors and the motors that you would like to, find, uh, to have, and uh, you need to uh, have a dynamic model, or you, it is better to have a dynamic model to uh, find the relation between the torques that uh, the motors are giving or the forces that are in the cable with the uh, dynamics that you have here in terms of the moving platform, the cables, and different uh, structure of a cable robot. Uh, this is this could be implicit and uh, uh, very simple, but later when you go for dynamic performance analysis, uh, it is better to put the dynamic formulation into an explicit form and into a mass matrix, uh, uh, Christopher or uh, centrifugal and uh, uh, matrix, and also the gravity vector usually here. 
where to get a, a explicit form is very useful uh, when you're using model-based control. You can use either this form or in the model-based control, more force motion control. Uh, you can use uh, the explicit form or it is better if you have some adaptive structure or robust adaptive structure that is uh, pretty well developed in the literature. It is better to have a regressive form. This is a uh, re, re, very usual regressor form. The regressor form is a matrix multiplied by a number of parameters that the parameters are the dynamic parameters. And uh, uh, this could be kinematic and dynamic problem, parameter like mass, uh, moment of inertia, and, and so forth. And uh, another version of this uh, uh, regressor form, which is a linear regressor form, uh, has been uh, used by uh, Slotin Lee, as we developed what uh, Slotin Lee for. A uh, special case of robust uh, controller, robust active controller, uh, which uh, a bit different from that. Uh, it also includes some reference trajectories coming into the picture that uh, are be used for the model based control. So it is also good to have to develop such uh, model uh, based controllers. Uh, so if we need, uh, if you would like to do it that way, it is uh, necessary to have uh, the uh, the, the dynamic model. And the final thing, which is also very, very important for developing a robot is a calibration of the robot. And for a calibration of the robot, we need to have also a, a, a dynamic model and find the, uh, the exact parameters. And if you have the exact parameters doing the calibration, then we can use these parameters in terms of the uh, model-based control scheme as we uh, explained here. Now, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry if I go a bit on mathematics here, but I, I, start, I, I would uh, just uh, make it very uh, very com conceptual, not very detailed, that uh, general audience can also understand it. Um, um, there are many methods to develop uh, uh, dynamic uh, formulation and dynamic analysis. Newton Euler method is good for and mechanical design, Lagrangian is the most uh, uh, celebrated or used case, and which is uh, basically based on the energy system. And uh, pr principle, uh, the principle of uh, virtual work is uh, another method, which is not that computational intensive. It gives us a very good idea in terms of uh, explicit uh, dynamic, uh, but it has some difficulties that I will explain here and some uh, uh, form of uh, revealing them or uh, overcoming this problem. Uh, in general, when we are using the principle of virtual work, this is the principle of virtual work. It's basically uh, very simple so that the actuator torques or the forces that are coming into the system may multiply that the work that has been uh, produced by these are equal to the forces that are uh, used for the motion and also for the ex uh, uh, the forces that are uh, in uh, interaction with the environment. Uh, these generalized forces for the end effector and these are the generalized forces for the uh, links. And for a manipulator with a, diff a number of uh, different links, these terms are becoming quite uh, difficult to generate. Then uh, we are using the basic idea of Jacobian, which uh, represents uh, the uh, joint space motion to the task space motion. And this uh, will reduce this formulation to this general formulation that uh, here we have some uh, Jacobians for the velocities and Jacobian for the, uh, the angular Jacobian. These uh, we work with the forces that are interaction, and these works with the torques or the move, the rotational motion that we have. And these generalized forces are the real forces that are existing, and also the inertial forces uh, which are uh, generated by the motion and the acceleration that we have. So up to here is quite uh, uh, easy and uh, available everywhere. We, by this formulation, we have implicit dynamic. This is the first version, as I mentioned in the uh, previous case, we can go to the explicit dynamic by uh, just defining the velocities and acceleration of the center of gravity here, as you see by some Jacobians. Here we have some J, uh, VI for Jacobian four velocity, linear velocity, angular velocity. 
And by uh, introducing them and also the derivative of that, we can get the acceleration. We can put these accelerations into these forces and then come with a general formulation here and you see uh, the MCG matrix matrices can be explicitly uh, defined, even analytically defined uh, if you have the Jacobian uh, quite uh, available. Of course, the moving platform uh, mass and matrix and also the other terms comes into the picture. Um, this is quite uh, straightforward, but the, the key issue is the Jacobians. Uh, and since the Jacobians, uh, you see here, if you can find a very good method to find the Jacobians, they have a very uh, powerful method of uh, dynamic analysis here. Uh, we talk about uh, just some Jacobian for a very special case. Of course, different cases can be considered here. Consider a 3UPU parallel manipulator, which is a quite uh, well-known manipulator, uh, which has a uh, uh, positioning, uh, uh, three uh, X, Y, Z positioning for the moving platform. The, the idea is coming here. Of course, we have some uh, prismatic joints here. So, uh, uh, we have the angular velocity, we have the group closure, and then by derivative, we can find the uh, Jacobian matrices. Uh, usually there is a, a regular uh, problem or mistake that uh, uh, Clemo has uh, indicated in one of his picture about that uh, the uh, Jacobian perp, the, the many people think that the and motion is just uh, cannot be along the uh, uh, s-axis, but it could be along and uh, on the perpendicular axis. So we have two Jacobians here. The first Jacobian can be defined by this relation. The second one can be defined by this. This is a bit uh, difficult to find, but uh, it is possible. Uh, but we, not only we need the Jacobian, we need for both the center of mass of the piston and and this makes the system more messy. And then uh, the acceleration, since we need the derivative, becomes more uh, difficult in terms of uh, explicit dynamic. And finally, we have the acceleration and we have the, uh, uh, the embodied uh, terms, but uh, with a lot of uh, effort, which is required for this. This comes to the picture, what shall we do? And this, this can be not uh, comparable to Lagrange method if you use a direct uh, case like this. The idea that uh, has been come over here is not to use the center of gravity uh, for this and use another point, another axillary point. And this, of course, in many other uh, papers, not in the content of virtual work in terms of uh, other uh, came or also uh, Lagrangian method. This has been proposed. We are also reformulating and re-examining it uh, about another point. If we don't use the, uh, the center of mass, any point, which usually the point are, the point of interest are the points that the Jacobians can define quite easy. <laughs> this is the, 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 the main idea. Uh, so we put it uh, usually on the joints, but uh, for formulation, just to any any other uh, point that you have, you have the same idea, but for any arbitrary point. Now, if you have an arbitrary point, some uh, some problems comes here. The, this uh, this becomes more difficult. Uh, let's say in terms of uh, these terms, uh, but uh, and it seems that it is not very. Uh, useful, but uh, when you go uh, a bit further, you see that the Jacobians become very uh, simpler. Now we can uh, use the velocity for the uh, any arbitrary point, like before we have the Jacobians, and also we have the Jacobian dots here. And then we go uh, to the dynamic, so explicit dynamic. It is uh, messier than before. It is uh, larger in terms of the terms that we are including here, but uh, we have the in initiation that if we can make the Jacobian GBI or G, G omega i, J omega i uh, to be simple, then the overall dynamics becomes much, much more uh, uh, in terms of calculation, much better. 
Now we put the proper placement of this arbitrary joint, of course, uh, for different cases, we can see different approaches, for example, for uh, cases that we have here uh, with pistons, uh, like uh, uh, many, many manipulators here, we say that the Jacobians for the center of mass is not good, but if you go for the uh, attachment point, if you have a link like that, it is much easier because as you see, JVI and JV2 are very easily defined uh, by zero and uh, I in the matrix. We did it for several case studies, uh, of course, uh, special cases, and find it uh, quite well. If you have a distal joint, a proximal joint, these two points are very good. Uh, and you can see that the Jacobians becomes very simple. Uh, we come with a triptron uh, uh, as another version. Uh, of, of course, here they have also the distal and uh, the, uh, uh, these two points, uh, but here it is an actuated case. Again, we see that this, we use this. Uh, JVs are not that simple as the previous one, but uh, physically intuitive, yeah, very uh, simple. The, uh, exa the Jacobians come to with the uh, uh, E1, E2, E3, which are the, ax the, the three Cartesian axes that is uh, available in Trutron. And again, the JV2s are all uh, basically I, and it is much makes it very uh, simple. As another example, we go to the uh, edge line, another uh, form uh, that we have uh, some smart motion around the point. And this, since we have a motion about the point, this is very, very useful here. This is very good for surgical robotics cases that we have RCM. Any, any time that we have RCM, there is a point that the, the robot is rotating about that. that therefore, that point is a very good candidate for uh, the arbitrary frame that we are using here. Here, you can see that the JV right around this is very simple. And then uh, we uh, basically verify this model for different approaches. We find it, of course, it is a lot of uh, details here. I just skip it for different, uh, four different, uh, uh, cases here, uh, the Aras diamond, this is the, our surgical uh, robot that we have developed. This is the AGI, the Triptron, these two are mostly developed in uh, uh, Laval, uh, and also the U, 3UPU, which is a position of these uh, uh, three uh, cases are, have, can be categorized into uh, totally translational or totally uh, rotational robot. In both cases, we have the arbitrary point very good, and then we can find the uh, dynamics quite uh, well, and then verify them by Adams by having uh, some uh, model from them yeah, and getting uh, the Adams and MATLAB uh, developed here. Uh, these two robots they have developed and put the, uh, all the dynamic equation in GitHub. No, get up, and then also for these two, we have found and uh, basically verified with very good accuracy that the dynamic model is uh, not only uh, correct, it is much uh, uh, better in terms of uh, computational intensity, and uh, we can use it uh, further. These are on the publication right now. Now that we have done the dynamic, just go one step ahead and see what uh, would be the use of uh, this dynamic model. We can use the full dynamic for different approaches. Here we are using the uh, calibration and also the model-based control as a two example here for our uh, surgical robot, which we call uh, Diamond, RS Diamond. We did the same thing. Uh, we added some friction terms uh, here because the model was not, uh, does not include that friction terms. It is very easy to find some friction, find the, uh, uh, basically the re linear regressors. When we find the dynamic uh, in terms of the uh, mass matrix C and uh, G, then we can uh, just uh, turn it into the uh, uh, regressor form that I mentioned before. Uh, we did that for the, uh, and the linear regression, and then we use the constraint list for estimation here. Uh, since many of the, of the parameters that we are using are either positive or start constraint, that uh, instead of using a, a general uh, list square solution and find a constraint uh, list for estimation, we got very, very good uh, 
uh, result for this robot, as you see, uh, quite the measure and the uh, true value and the estimated value are quite uh, uh, considering. And as you see in here, use the, the compensated uh, value, uh, as you see here, Uh, we have here, as you see, the robot, the same robot uh, has been used uh, and calibrated. If we don't uh, use uh, any gravity compensation term, the robot is uh, quite uh, not working well. But by calibrating it and finding the gravity matrix, then we can just simply use the gravity compensation, very simple gravity compensation, and just uh, remove all the uh, gravity terms in here. It, this uh, shows somehow verified that the uh, verified air gravity models uh, work quite well. And also we did some uh, uh, model-based controller, IDC controller, robust controller, robust adaptive, based on the model which uh, is presented in different papers. And uh, the robot is working well and the gravity is uh, fully compensated and we are, we are having very good uh, uh, trajectories. I uh, just give uh, one minute uh, uh, thinking here. So many work we have done for just controlling. Uh, so many, of course, development of dynamics is always uh, very pleasurable, but it's a lot of work. We come across another idea from last year that uh, can be used for some other method that control method, of course, that don't need so many uh, dynamic formulations, so many hassles. So of course, it is very interesting, but it is a lot of work. And we started our a new line of research, uh, of course, with the community, which is uh, quite growing in this, uh, which we call it data driven control. And we would like to examine how uh, applicable it is, uh, not knowing about the ro robot uh, model, but uh, just using the data, the, the measurement as a uh, system. Uh, just to give a very general uh, uh, idea here, of course, we implemented this part on our cable robot just to make it a bit uh, versatile here. Of course, as you see, we have an actuated dynamics map here. As you see in here, most power robot and cable robot have MC, nonlinear term, friction terms, gravity, Jacobian. I think if you add the, also the actuator dynamics, which we did call in the previous slide, if you add the actuator dynamics, we have also um, some uh, dynamic from the motor side coming to, to the picture. A lot of parameters to be determined and a lot of work to be done. Of course, we need the Jacobian. And for parallel robot, everything uh, is better to be written in the task space. As you see, we have, if we integrate these two together, we have uh, another uh, general form like before, we have the uh, MT, which is the uh, friction terms and other nonlinear terms. Uh, and the, the total means that we have included the actuator dynamics and also the parallel uh, uh, dynamics here, as you see. And we need the Jacobians here as well. And uh, every, no, everyone in the uh, uh, parallel community knows that uh, determining exact value for the Jacobian, especially for large uh, deployable cable robots, is not that easy. Uh, and uh, so uh, this uh, kinematic dynamic formulation is good, but it is not a real, uh, it's not, cannot be directly used in model based controller unless uh, very, very carefully calibrated as, we, as, as, as we've done in the previous case. Uh, is there any other method to do that? We are examining yes, just do everything in joint space. Our uh, actuators, the motors are in joint space, everything in joint space, but the measurement uh, could be in task space or in joint space, uh, which, whichever you have available. We will uh, we look at here, you see that if we put it into the, the dynamic formation, the joint space, it, it becomes really a mess because a lot of Jacobian, Jacobian transpose comes into the picture. 
And uh, it is a very, very, very uh, uh, definitely uh, difficult terms to find uh, this R matrix. But we can uh, examine that uh, as uh, with a lot of uncertainty. We can have the data, the measurement data, to estimate or to somehow compensate this dynamic. Let's start with that. So uh, what is data and data driven control? Compensate for the, all these unknown linearities and plus uh, for cables, we need uh, positive tension in the cables, which also needs the Jacobians, the null space of the Jacobians, some sort of optimization in the classic way. Here we are just leaving everything in there. And do, doing everything in joint space. Why in joint space? Because it is much easier to do that in joint space since the actuators are there. And since we are not using the model, we don't have the hassle to find this term. Why not do it in joint space? Now, we did three trials up to here in the, in the last six months, and all three trials were good. I don't say perfect, but <laughs> much easier and very good. The first one comes from our previous uh, work. We had uh, some uh, published papers some, uh, on the linear PD control, uh, which uh, robust PD control. Uh, which uses uh, not the, 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 don't mimic all the dynamic, but it was a classical approach. And we started with that. We use the robust NPD since we had that. We add two terms to this, which uh, provide us with the two objectives that we have. The one term is we call it TDE, time delay estimation technique, which is well developed in control community, uh, less used in uh, cable robotic community. Uh, TDE, time delay estimation, uh, to get the nonlinearity, somehow to find some uh, essence of nonlinearity, and also add an adaptation law, uh, since we are using for, this is used for large uh, cable robotics, to have the to compensate for the uh, elasticity or the tension of, in the cable. And we started with that. Uh, if you just uh, give the general overview of that, uh, we can see that uh, we have, this is the TD method. We get the uh, sensor data. The sensor data should be accurate. And we are using somehow the acceleration term using a delayed acceleration term. Uh, the, the concept, the underlying concept is very simple. If we have the, the data that is at the present time, and the previous time. Uh, these two shows us uh, essence of the dynamics. How difficult it is. Uh, it shows the difficulty in the, the dynamic. And we can get these two from it. The TDE, the, the general underlying concept is that, and it is very interesting that it has some very uh, uh, stability, very good stability analysis on it too. So using the uh, general TDE is not quite sufficient because we, we, need, we have the robust NPD as before I will explain here. We add an adaptive law uh, to make the, that the cables orientation. Let me just give the, uh, the details here. The NPD is very simple. A PD control uh, with a trajectory input plus a sliding mode or some sort of uh, robust term, robust term. We call it a robust NPD. And then we have a TDE. TDE is somehow extracting the data from the previous case. And then adaptive law. The adaptive law comes uh, for uh, just to adjust the adjustment of the, what we have in the uh, table tension. Of course, this is uh, a bit more in detail if I would like to go there. But it is, it's like that. If you see that the cable is loosening. You just make it to, you pull it to make it, uh, you know, uh, uh, be in tension. So the reference trajectory here is uh, changed be, uh, by, by measuring the, uh, basically the uh, uh, force, uh, forces in the in the cables. Uh, by doing that, we get a very, very good, uh, impressive result. Uh, it, the, the, of course, not uh, in, not perfect, but very promising result because uh, we didn't use any dynamics here and uh, we're, we're just using the data. Here. Of course, it needs a lot of uh, uh, tuning here. I will explain to you. 
Then we thought, so why so difficult? Why making it so difficult, robust, and PD adaptive, TD, everything? Can we do everything all together? Then we go through more uh, intelligent robot. You see, yes, we can use the TD concept here. Uh, at a learning term, and instead of having an uh, adaptive term, have a saturation function uh, to make sure that the, ten, the tables are intentional. Here, you can see the different here. As you see, we have all in joint space. We just use the measurement of the PDAS, uh, just joint space. We are not measuring the end effective position at all in this case, uh, since uh, we are working the uh, all joint space trajectory. Here you see we have a PD controller like here, plus a, a corrective term, this learning term, uh, which makes uh, very simple like that. And these learning terms come from a TDE control, uh, which is a PD on the error dynamics, uh, but also a, a KS, which, uh, which is also somehow bounding it. This term has been put into a saturation function to make the control effort limited and to make sure that everything is, uh, that cable tension is positive. And this makes, uh, for me, it was uh, unbelievable to not use any null space of the Jacobian to have forced distribution for the controller and that the system is working. And it is amazingly work. Uh, of course, it, it needs a lot of, uh, 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 training here. I don't uh, go through a lot of detail here, but as, in, as I mentioned, we just need these two parameters to be tuned, and the other parameters are very simple, a PD controller. Uh, and uh, it, is, it is much easier than the previous case uh, with the same, almost the same result. And then we go through this third approach, which uh, totally uh, intelligent base. This is a, a well-known method uh, proposed maybe uh, 15 years ago, which is called uh, Belvic Brain Emotional Learning Based Intelligent Control. This is the mimics what the, the brain is doing. It has uh, basically three different approach or uh, section. Amygdala is the, the, the point that works with the sensory data. Basically, the sensory data gives here uh, what how we, uh, the, the controller should do. Uh, work is like this. We have the arbitral frontal case, which gives it from the reward base. So we have action and reward in our uh, training in our uh, brain system that is working here. And then we have also the sensory uh, thalamus and sensory cortex, uh, which uh, basically are modeled by some explanation of some PD and PID uh, terms uh, coming into the reward and the sensory action. And the control law uh, is just the simple uh, action minus the rewards that we are getting and the interaction between these is working well. Of course, uh, this needs a lot of uh, uh, parameters and also a lot of uh, tuning. Uh, this can be tuned by trial and error, which is a very fast, very, very uh, difficult task, is it? Uh, but you know, not as difficult as the dynamic derivation. Um, but it can also be used, uh, we can use an optimization method to find the better uh, variables for here. And then uh, we have the integrated force distribution here. We have positive tension in the cable and no information, no information, again, no information on the Jacobi or the model dynamics is used or the front, uh, the forward kinematics is used in this case, everything just by the team. And you can see the simulation and experimental result here and what accuracies we can get uh, from this uh, case here. Here we can see uh, that uh, the simulation on uh, we are, we are uh, implemented on our camera remote version two, which is uh, quite fast motion, and uh, it works uh, quite well. First, the tuning is done on the simulation, and then uh, we further implemented and uh, done a final tuning in the implementation case. And as you see uh, here. I, don't, I, I hope that you can see the movie. It's a bit, let me stop, stop this. Uh, 
it is uh, doing quite well. I give some quantitative result as well. Uh, if you see, uh, we have about about thousand degrees of motion in the border side since everything is in Jacobian, and you see that uh, we are without any difficulty. We are uh, passing there, and this is the uh, the rotational motion uh, very very well in terms of the exact uh, the error dynamics. You can see that uh, about one percent error we can get here, about ten degrees. Uh, within thousand degrees, and this one degree, if you see also, uh, it is also very interesting. It's very very interesting that the error that we are getting is just the delay that we have between the, uh, the desired position and the final position because we are using some sort of the time delay estimation and estimation. We are using these two samples. Uh, to get the dynamics from the system. And we are seeing here as the, the error, the error is not a real trajectory error since we are doing a uh, 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 sinusoidal system. This is a delayed uh, version of the system. Now, if we go further and uh, finalize the thing that uh, these are the forces, the forces are all positive and finally uh, the, uh, the training approaches I'll see here. If Philip comes here, it means that my time is over. Okay, I just, uh, I just uh, suspended. <laughs> These are the people are, who are working on this and uh, this is my, the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm sorry for being a bit out of time. Okay, thank you, Amid. It's just that some people might have to leave at 1 uh, p.m. Uh, Quebec time, uh, so... Uh, we have some time for questions. Anyone uh, wants to ask a question to Amid? I, I may have a question, uh, Philip. Yes, go ahead, Prima. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for this very nice talk, Amid. Uh, I, I think that the, uh, the data-driven control works well because it automatically eliminates the uh, negligible dynamics terms. Like if you have a very complex dynamic model, sometimes many of these terms may be negligible. So since it considers only the data, it, it doesn't you know, uh, include that. Uh, so my question is, it, it means that uh, it learns from you know, the, the data that is produced by the motion of the robot. So what if uh, at some point in time, you use the robot in a dynamic range that has not been covered when you trained the uh, the controller. So have you tried things like that? Very, very good question. Yes, basically uh, the, the concept is yes, it should be trained, you know, uh, otherwise you cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, guarantee the stability of that. Uh, but uh, since, also, it is getting the feedback of the real-time sensory data. It is somehow, uh, uh, you know, uh, resilient to uh, some sort of uh, unmodeled dynamics. If you uh, change the payload, for example, uh, 200 times, this is not working. But if you have, you know, just a variation of the payload, which is usually working well, uh, it is working fine. The issue, the problem, the main issue is uh, the amount that you spend on the training time. This is usually not <laughs> said in the papers, and uh, also I didn't show it here. The more you give the, the, the time for training, the better result you can get. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is not as accurate as model-based control that we expect. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Maya, you have a question? Yeah, th thanks, Amit, for the presentation. Um, so, so as you know, I'm interested in uh, cable models and things like that, um, and, and especially how they affect you know, the control. From what I could gather of what you presented, you're essentially assuming that the cables are straight lines um, and that the tension has to stay uh, positive in the cable. I, I'm sort of interested to know whether you feel that that's you know sufficient for 
the applications that um, you have. Like, so I'm I'm thinking of uh, cases where the the sag in the cable might be um, uh, significant, like due to distributed mass along the cable, or where you might even end up having uh, things like vibrations in the cable, whether transverse or longitudinal, things like that. Uh, can you comment on that? Yes, uh, uh, again, a very good question. Uh, uh, you know, in our cases, you know, since we have two applications, one application is the camera workflow, but which is about one meter cable, so it is quite uh, over constrained. So we can assume that we have you know, a line uh, cable and no sagging. And of course, we have some. Uh, uh, elasticity there, the elasticity can be considered here. But when we go through the very long applications like uh, what we have in that or the other application, uh, the cable dynamics becomes dominant than the uh, moving platform dynamics. And uh, for that case, we haven't done any, uh, any uh, uh, still uh, uh, research or any uh, trials on the control. We are doing that. We, we, we are planning to do that uh, for our uh, Arascan robot, which is about eight meters. It is not very large, but it is uh, quite, uh, and it is suspended. Uh, but I assume uh, that uh, that is not as easy as what we are doing uh, for a full constraint or for uh, simpler dynamics. Uh, but as you know, uh, the problem of modeling them is also very much more difficult if you have the sagging you know you cannot have a simple kinematic to have a, a kinetostatic or uh, the force and the motion the distribution could, should be together uh, what i am uh, trending to do is to have some sort of combinatorial uh, approach to have some sort of modeling and some sort of uh, uh, data driven uh, cases for such a more complicated uh, uh, system. Okay, yeah, thank you, Hamid. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Ashkan, you had a question? Uh, yes, uh, greetings, dear Dr. Tahira. I hope it's not great. Hey, uh, thanks for such an informative and practical presentation. Actually, the question I had, <clears throat> as you presented in your presentation about the parallel robots and the brain emotional learning based controller uh, how do you see the uh, future of implementing the haptic devices with these kind of technologies are they publicly implemented and utilized in health centers or to say much more in advance how do you see the way of artificial intelligence in contribution with haptic devices and emotional learning based controllers and parallel robots in the future form of cities uh, do we have a long way or uh, it's in near actually in near technologies uh, can i know your opinion about that sure very good question thank you ashkar uh, you know uh, the problem comes not from the haptic or the force uh, issue uh, the com the comes from the application we are using haptic devices when you are using a robot with environment, especially with a human being. And uh, this is the uh, bottleneck here. You know, we are trusted on classical control uh, more, we are, at least in my opinion, uh, because we have the stability proofs, all the background there about robustness, about the resiliency and the other things that make sure that you are not doing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, unexpected uh, behavior for the control. Uh, and it seems that uh, this is the case, uh, especially for, since we are using haptic uh, devices for our surgical uh, robot, we have a RHS assist the development, a lot of uh, impedance control over there. Uh, I'm not looking uh, the problem in terms of the you know the development of the control theory from the data-driven base. It is mostly on the, uh, satisfaction of the stability concerns, which, which are uh, quite prominent in the uh, human robot interaction, uh, which uh, is there. Uh, so I don't see it is coming true. Uh, right now, I am in the University of Alberta doing the research on medical robotics with uh, Professor Talakwili. The same idea comes here. 
And we are using the uh, uh, sensory data or data-driven data, not for the control, uh, but for monitoring and assisting. This is the way that uh, the future of uh, this uh, horizon of the uh, research is, uh, I think it is uh, going. Of course, if you have a very full sophisticated control proof, uh, which I don't think uh, it will come very uh, early, uh, then we may examine them uh, with the hint. And I'm, I'm sure that I would not be the first uh, person to <laughs> examine it on my side. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for your complete response, dear professor. Yeah, also with RSH assist, we are familiar with it, with the, like, these conferences. Uh, actually, ICTIA and Anikram, it was a great actually project with your team, and uh, it was very interesting and practical. Thank you. Thank you, Ashka. OK, thank you. We have a question from Zara. Yes. Uh, hi, Professor. Hi, um, okay, thank you. How are you? Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one of them was that I didn't... Start with one, not a couple. Maybe you don't have <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So um, for the last approach, I didn't quite get the idea on how it differed with the previous one, the last approach. Uh, you know, the last approach uh, is totally uh, uh, brain emotional brain mimicking control. So we don't have any saturation there. We don't have any, uh, you know, adaptive term, no robust term. It is fully, fully uh, intelligent, you know, just from what we get from the structure that is, it, it is a reward and action based. Uh, it is a different approach. You would like to uh, have a variety. I, of course, we have done a lot of other things here, but I would like to present a, at least three approaches. Um, the first one was more classical. The second one was, you know, half half, and the the, the last one was fully intelligent. And uh, the result that we get for the fully intelligent is, uh, I show you, uh, comes from a lot of tuning, of course, uh, and we have no uh, guarantee on the stability at all. Uh, for the previous case, for the TDE, we have something, but in here we don't have. In the second approach, we learn something about the dynamics, right? About the... Yeah, I, uh, I actually, all of them learn about dynamics. Uh, they cannot uh, do control without knowing or estimating or somehow encapsulating the dynamics. But the approach is different. In the second one, we have two time steps. From two time steps of the out output, we can get uh, how the robot is be behaving, how elasticity is involved, how uh, the dynamics is involved. And of course, uh, is more, we can conceptualize the dynamics. In the last uh, part, it is also getting the, know, knowing the dynamics, but not uh, from two steps, but from the reward and the uh, action that it is given to the system. And can I ask my last question? Sure, you are asking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, for the delayed estimation, is any issue with the delay? I mean, uh, what what do you mean an issue with the delay? Of course, um, it is. You know, the, the the concept is based on the delay, so the control, the performance of the control, is also constrained with the delay. So we cannot have uh, more than a certain amount of accuracy because we have always, always one step delay estimation there. We are always relying on the previous step uh, to estimate on this step. And this, this uh, makes, uh, if we have a very fast transient or very fast robot, this uh, delay could be a large uh, motion in the task space. So for re regular one, uh, we don't see that much problem, but if you have very fast or very, very jerky robot, it seems to be uh, quite uh, uh, limiting the performance. So why not having offline estimation? Uh, because uh, offline estimation means that we have, again, a model-based uh, control. We are not using model-based. Okay, of course, thank you. Approach. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. If there's no more questions, then uh, I will. Have one more question from oh. Mr. Bezad Moshiri. Uh, Please go yeah. ahead. Bezad, do you have any right. questions? Yeah, thanks very much, Hamid. I appreciate it. Thanks very much for the audience to give me permission. 
just to have a very quick question. Uh, it was an impressive talk, by the way. Thanks a lot, Hamid. Uh, the point you know that I'm very interested in the, uh, the concept of data fusion. And I see on the end effector, you just mentioned two cameras plus IMU are involved. Probably for the accurate position and the pose estimation, the issue of the image fusion may affect very well. And then I would like to know whether, is there any possibility to compare your method with the image fusion techniques in this respect. And also a very minor question regarding of the <clears throat> protocol that you have used for the data processing, the CAN protocol I see. Mm -hmm. So from point of the speed and the accuracy in that respect also, maybe there would be some other possibilities. Even we have the CAN open, which is very quicker, faster, or even the mode bus, if we just using the five kilobit per second, uh, for point of token passing. These, these are the issues that I'm very interested about. However, if you have enough time, you may go through that. Otherwise, we can just carry on later with your team, by the way. Thanks. No, for I just give very quick uh, uh, answer, very quick. Because, uh, you know, the first thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the first uh, issue that I mentioned was uh, we put a lot of sensors. Uh, we are using also a graph-based optimization there uh, for doing uh, very accurate localization and mapping of the robot. So there, uh, the uh, sensor fusion is one of the best assets. And uh, I, of course, we can have some collaboration as I know that you are uh, very well uh, worked on that issue. We can work on that. Uh, on the second question about the uh, CAN boss and mode boss, uh, since uh, basically uh, the, the uh, length or the, the, the the difference of the uh, different location that we have are not that uh, uh, apart from each other. Uh, we can have different TCP, UDP, and other uh, uh, protocols using here. Uh, this case is much uh, standardized and very well uh, working for us, and we have no problem here to initiate another, uh, you know, another type of industrial yeah. communication. That was great. Thanks very much for your report. I appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. So uh, thank you, Amid, for uh, taking the time to uh, entertain us about your, uh, your research. Uh, and uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, Amid. Thank you very much, Hamid Tagari. It was very nice of you to give us this talk. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thanks, Mayor, for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.